to myself that I would only work on public and cultural projects, so that's how I got here, right? These guys like champion that type of work. We want to make buildings that will last a long time, and those kinds of institutions are ones that share the same values that we have. The office is really run like an atelier. There's a lot of, about the way that artists work that we bring into the way that we work in terms of taking material, seeing how we can play with it, experiment. This is a hand-molded brick. Quite heavy. <laughs> this is a hand-carved piece of stone. We love to have objects around us, and we love to have the real material around us. And that's why this place is full of stuff. There's a certain poetry and a certain kind of elegance, I think, in the way that Todd and Billy runs this office. There's a spirit here that's just unlike anywhere else that, I, that I've experienced. It has a lot of life. I think we're invigorated by this place. It's relaxed but intense. I mean, I think people here feel comfortable to spend the day in their biking shorts. Challenging uh, is one word. Balanced. Playful. <laughs> Complete. Varied. Inquisitive. Creative. Too obvious. Too obvious. Damn it. Uh, working here is like working with family. Like my family at home, except everyone here is an architect and lives in New York. Basically, we have no doors. We know that we're working in teams, but the teams are shifting teams, and we want this to be much more porous and, and, and open. People are constantly aware of what's going on in the studio and what other people are doing. When there are issues or problems, it you know, floats across the open space. You just sort of learn and feed off one another, which is great. I like that. That's really important to me. When I'm sitting at my desk, I want to hear that sort of sense of the sound of the studio. There's an energy that, that's present, sort of an intense energy. Sometimes it seems insane and then it turns out to be genius. There's this kind of uh, osmosis between projects. It's a lot of conversations. Everyone's contributing, everyone's part of the process. I think we want everyone to understand everything about making a project and also everything about running an office. And everybody has dish day. Yeah, I, uh, Monday I do the dishes. I would say respect. There's a lot of respect um, in the office, respect for the knowledge that's here. Someone found the building so interesting to them that they built a scale model in, in Lego. I really like some parts of this project. They look at their sort of surroundings a lot and, and apply a lot of that. Todd and Billy were taking a trip in Chile and happened to walk into this cathedral. It's centuries old, the building. And they incorporated this floor into the barns. And I think it really exemplifies how Todd and Billy design. And it's really about knowing the world and those are your tools. So this sort of mixture of the garden and the gallery was really about a sense of the intensity of the collection and a sense of respite from that intensity. This is a uh, sample we had made by a very small iron workshop. It reminds you that our buildings are still made by hand and they're made by people. Working in a place and trying to make it of that place, trying to work with craftspeople who are there. We were invited to work in India nine years ago to make an entire campus for a software company. We made it entirely out of Indian materials with Indian methods for constructing buildings as well as our own understanding of how one should build in the 21st century. And we took this there and we showed them how to use Exactus. It sort of shows you the extent to which Todd and Billy think about details and how to achieve something. It's a huge gift to be able to connect very deeply with the building culture and the general culture of India. I think we have the luxury of really thinking about what it means to make buildings. This is one of the sunscreens from the, the Berkeley East Asian Library. There's a kind of duality of scale, one of which is sort of from the distance, sort of super refined and precise, but then as you get closer you can see the imperfection, or as Todd and Billy like to call it, the hand. 
The main quality of the process is that it's iterative. You hear this a lot around the office. It's one of Todd's favorite tools. Kind of make it a hard line thing and then sketch over it and use a lot of white out and things will kind of get really messy. Some highlighter sketches by Todd. And then it'll kind of make it back into the computer. The office is sort of designing things until they're absolutely done. It's not linear. Um, it's, it's a back and forth. They work so well off of each other. He understands space three-dimensionally. Sense of weight and the sense of movement through a space is really coming so much from you. Billy brings the wisdom. She brings the calm. She brings actually the sort of uh, sense of propriety to everything. That's really important for everybody in the studio because if I bring the kind of ripples in the weather and uh, she, uh, she brings the sun. work it took to detail every square inch of the home. So we wanted to make this building one that not only allowed us to do research, but actually invited the public in to think about how one does research. It's been incredibly successful because of the design of the building. We wanted a space that was really going to represent the digital future, the 21st century news future. The Ehrlich team came up with all sorts of different, I thought, really neat and interesting ideas. What we've done is actually making the building not feel and look so defensive, but actually more welcoming. Anyone could come up off of the sidewalk. They could see the birds. The, there's a hummingbird, I tell you, right there. And the butterflies that kind of come in and out of this arroyo landscaping. Multicultural modernism is a term for our design philosophy. A multicultural anthropology. We want to be global and local simultaneously. And early architects understand that our best cues come from the street, and that they have to talk to and understand the community. And have their input really tangibly manifest. It's a deeply personal relationship when we work on these houses. It's hard to build in Laguna. We were approved first time around through their uh, design council. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of art. It's a journey that's exciting to go on together, and it becomes a dialogue. We found out that we're foodies, foodies. together. <laughs> that same intimacy that we bring to our residential clients, we actually bring to our larger commercial clients, too. We also want to embrace all of the technologies at our disposal, but we want to do it intelligently, something that is completely integrated into the lexicon of the design. It was an incredible partnership. They were able to create the building that we see today, which is incredibly functional and just so spectacular in look. Our firm is definitely committed towards design that has a good conscience. Very humane and livable spaces. I like to call it an architectural family. There's a synergy here and we like to, to share like all the joy and magic of each project with each other. There's a lot of energy in this space. You can get a sense of the creativity that's in process here. Having our roots in residential has really kind of shaped the way we practice. We will always strive for design excellence. We will always do multi-project types, and we will always challenge our clients, and we hope they will challenge us. I think that translates into amazing, uplifting work. of purpose. It was a way of saying, how exactly do you recover a city? Our community uh, reacted, proclaiming that Broadmoor lives. We wanted to rebuild better. We wanted to rebuild smarter. When it got to planning the library, we could not imagine any other architectural firm partnering with this community that understood the fabric of our neighborhood, that understood the visions of the people and how we wanted to repurpose and, and shape um, the use of our library. Our visions have truly been realized. It's the center of our community. 
everybody in the firm is engaged on some level in their neighborhood and in their community. Those kinds of people with those values gravitate toward this firm. I knew that if I was working here, I would be contributing positively to the built environment. I think you will feel the momentum and the, almost the adrenaline of the firm, and it grows out of the momentum of rebuilding the city of New Orleans. Community engagement, a commitment to collaboration, design excellence, environmental stewardship, those four core values kind of represent the ethos of the firm. Laniap, it's a Creole word for mm, a little bit more than you paid for. The extra service, the extra attention, the extra care. Our philosophy um, revolves around uh, constant experimentation, searching for a better idea. And so I think the Laniap for us is the results of that experimentation. How do we make the design something that's going to benefit the community and serve a larger purpose than just building? A building. We want that aha moment whenever somebody sees it, right? The unexpected little extra. How can we capture some of the magic to allow the community generating possibilities of a French Quarter courtyard? Water is flowing. It's actually part of a very cunning system for handling rainwater and storing water for irrigation and then repercolation into our soils. But the users don't have to know that. It's part of a gorgeous experience that is very French Quarter kind of quality, but it's not historicist. So that one moment to me is, is just exciting to be in that space and sort of connect back to uh, our city. Every Monday morning we gather the troops together in a full staff meeting, uh, and every Friday afternoon we celebrate the end of a successful week, usually there's some alcohol involved. It is an open, collaborative environment. We exchange ideas, like, basically over our desk. You'd be amazed at what you learn from just a, a passing conversation. We just have a ton of pin-up space. You know, it lets anybody that's walking by kind of understand the project. And we all have the ability to comment, critique, and engage. All animated by these tremendous views out towards the city and to the river. We can see the projects that we've done throughout the city from our office, and that inspires the work that we do. Reinventing the Crescent was headed up by Alan Eskew. The main goal of this project was to reconnect the community with the river. There was probably half a dozen influencers, all with a different point of view, and his comment was always that for any project of consequence, it requires a cheerleader, and sometimes that's you. Obviously, we miss Alan dearly, because he in many ways embodied the, the spirit of the office. So we'd say, you know, in many ways, it's easy to think, well, it's about the architecture. Uh, what Alan taught us is it's about everything else. EDR is not afraid to let people be challenged. I think we see mentorship is, is really key to the success of any firm. They have a lot of faith in um, emerging professionals. There is a nurturing aspect, which is really about providing a structure so that people are able to grow within their careers. This place provided everything that I thought architecture would be uh, when I got out of school. Caring. Family. Committed and engaged. Intense. Intense. <laughs> Everybody has a voice. We believe very strongly that in design the best idea wins. So the idea at 930 Poydras was to consolidate all of the communal aspects of that project on the ninth floor and cause interactions in that project that you might not find in a typical urban high-rise. It's more than just trying to solve the immediate problem that you've been presented with. It's uh, trying to better your environment that you and your neighbors and your community are going to be living in. We like to create beautiful spaces, but at the end of the day, it's really about who's using them. The church we designed for St. Martha's Parish was an opportunity that we took to design the church with the entire congregation. Together with a community, we created something that neither of us could have done alone. That's the secret, is being good listeners and spending time in the communities you're trying to serve. We are often the client's trusted advisor over the life of a building. We are making commitments to both monitor and have conversations with our clients that extend you know, past the time that we turn over the keys. If we set up the feedback loop right, we can make buildings that that building performs better and the next one we do performs even better. There's a realization that in order to build good communities, it takes more than simply doing good architecture. 
I see this future for architects as the kind of interpreters between the world of the built environment and the world of the needs of real people who occupy buildings. We as architects are more than just talented designers and more than just collaborators, but we can be advocates for uh, fighting the good fight. The future is very bright. I, I can't wait to see what tomorrow brings.